creating forms and adjusting the emails that they automatically set out uh, is something that's easy but often overlooked. So here we're going to just talk about how to set up a form. So when you get to the form and you get to your form editor, there's a couple things that you do need to check for. So always check uh, the advanced editor or the advanced on the content side. So the type, the lab label, and the name holder. So uh, the placeholder is the the placeholder that actually goes in the buttons. Um, and you can make this required by checking that. Uh, you can adjust the column width should you need it wider or smaller. If you'd like to have two side by side in this case, um, one would be 66, the other one would be 33, and that will automatically excuse me, format it onto the same row. Uh, with every field, make sure you check the advanced. And on the ID field, this needs to be uh, something that's memorable. Uh, so always lowercase, name, and it creates the short code. So this will be important when I show you how to create the form email that comes to you. So check through all these. Okay, uh, email is good. Telephone, oh look, see, you'll find field dash a number if nothing has been put in. So we'll call this one tell. Um, workshop name, for example, or we'll just call that workshop. And date, let's check if this is here. Nope, so we'll call this one date. And check it for message. So message is correct. So now these all have their own individual short code. Where this comes in is in the email portion you'll see that by default, it sends all fields. This will get you the information. However, it's not formatted well. It's just kind of in a linear place. And you can create your own custom form. So let's call this event registration form. And we'll all right, now when you're formatting this, this does take a little bit of HTML. Um, so the way I would suggest you do it, we'll start simply. Um, we're going to create, we want the name field. So you'll put this name here. And then what you'll go up back up to the, the name field here, go to the advanced tab and copy this short code. Take it back down to the email, we'll paste it in there. A um, couple formatting options I prefer to do is I will insert a, a break. Actually, I will insert two. So when this comes through, the next line will return down. Another formatting thing that I like to do is to make the field um, that's coming across. So in this case, the word name, I like to use the HTML for bold, which is strong. HTML is uh, opening, closing. Um, brackets with the slash, which is the closing tag. Uh, so now we'll enter the next line. And again, I'm going to put in strong, uh, strong to make that section bold. And the next one is email. Add, add the closing tag to the bold command. And go back up to the top, go to email, the advanced section, and we're gonna copy that short code and bring it back down to the email. So then let's paste it in there. Going to add the uh, break. Again, that's uh, opening and closing arrows uh, BR in the middle. That will create uh, two line breaks. So that's essentially how you can create a form that will be readable when you get it and also include the uh, appropriate email or information from your form. And finally, there are just a few other tips and tricks here. So when you do have a field that is required, if you're using either a placeholder or a label, um, I would definitely suggest putting an asterisk behind the text placeholder or label, uh, whichever you're using. Uh, this helps to indicate visually to the uh, clients or to your, your prospective students in this case, what is required. So they uh, don't skip over the field. They will get an error that does force them to do it, but uh, graphically it's a lot easier to do. Now the last and final uh, piece to check is in the email. So we have the two, that'll go to your company email. In the next section, in the from email, and from name, you'll want to copy the field IDs from the field forms. Make sure the from email is the field ID equal email and the name 
ID equals name in the reply to, it'll be a drop down option to select from. Otherwise, if you have your website here, if someone sends you a message and you click reply, it's going to go to your own email, not theirs. So again, in the email section, make sure that the from email is from your domain. Uh, it doesn't have to be a valid email, so just in this case, website. The from name should be the field's name of, of the field where they type their name, and reply to goes into the email field. If you'd like to add a second email, if you have a partner or if you have an assistant that does all your booking, uh, you can simply put their name in the CC or the BCC field and that will act just like a, a normal email. In this case, I'll drop mine in here and check it out. So update, uh, you're published and you are good to go. The form is complete and I will hit send. So let's click that. Uh, you'll notice the form confirmation is right here. So if you check on the email that it was sent from, you'll notice it was the website email that we set up in the form. Uh, this is extremely helpful because you can organize your inbox if you use a different uh, or fake email. So website or info at your domain and you can sort your inbox. It makes it really convenient uh, for capturing and sorting incoming events. So right here you can see the formatting as it is. We put the bold, which was the strong tags around here, and the break tags spaced it out. Makes it a lot easier to read. So that is how you create a form in Elementor. Thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button right now. Stay tuned and check out the channel for other interesting and informative videos.